and Man United have beaten Everton today. Three goals to nil. But it wasn't a 3-0 game. It wasn't a 3-0 game. In fact, Everton had double the shots that Man United had. Double the shots on target that Man United had. And essentially, it was Man United's quality. Our quality in the final third, in the end, that made the difference. Because if Everton took their chances, today could have been a different day and a whole different game. But we're going to have to talk today about Garnacho's goal. Today, in my opinion, we witnessed the goal of the season. That has to be Man United's goal of the season. If we score a better goal than that this season, I'll be very, very surprised. What a goal by the kid. Take a bow, son. We're going to talk about Garnacho's performance. We're going to talk about the penalty. We're going to talk about Everton. Like I said, today, it was a weird game because... Large parts of the game, we didn't play well at all and we failed to build, we failed to be cohesive, we failed to keep possession of the ball in the final third and to pin them down. But like I said, when it mattered, when it mattered the most, it was United's quality in the end that made the difference. Welcome back to the channel. As usual, guys, smash the like, turn on the notifications if you haven't yet subscribed. Subscribe below. There is a lot to talk about. How if you're not how much of today's win are we gonna pin on Ten Hag's Ten Hag's tactics, Ten Hag's substitutions, and the way he set United up? How much are we gonna pin today's win on, as usual, individual players and individual brilliance? Really taking us out, bringing us out, you know, helping us, rescuing us as usual. Today was a very, very, very weird game of football. Everton with the 10 points deduction, I was curious to find out how they were going to set up and how they were going to approach today's game, as well as how United were going to set up. And we're going to talk about the lineup, to be fair, or... To see a team, a football team, that didn't really include many of Ten Hag's signings, this team is essentially an Oli team. This team is essentially a team that was there, apart from, well, Manu is a youth product, but was there, and Garnacho was a youth, is a youth product bought by um, Oli. But this team is essentially an Oli team. And I want to try to I guess understand what's happened here and understand that we've reached a scenario a stage where this manager is not even he spent over 400 million let's just state that as fact he spent over 400 million pounds in just one year and he's not playing any of his own signings in fact he's relying now on the players that were there before the players that a lot of them, he wants out. He wants a lot of these players out. And these are the players that he's now relying on to win him games. And I want us to really, really understand that. Really understand that. Because a lot of people are really backing this manager, you know, through blood and through whatever. And I'm just curiously looking at him and I'm like, hold on a second. Are we not going to talk about what he's, the fact that he spent a hundred million pounds on Anthony and 60 million pounds on Mount and the fact that he's, Spending a lot of money on players that are just not cutting it. Are we not? And he's not playing them. And the players that he wanted to remove in the summer are now the players that he's relying on to rescue United at this time and rescue him. Rescue, rescue him. The players that he, he was almost, almost publicly flogging off. So, I don't know. I'm happy that Mino, in terms of the lineup, I'm happy that Mino, 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 don't butcher me about the pronunciation, please. I'm happy that he had a start today. I know he played a lot of games in pre-season and a lot of people were looking forward to see how he how he measured up against the senior players and how he looked within um, Ten Hag's system, I guess. Because the way that Ten Hag was speaking is almost as if he was already saying that Manu was a starter and maybe if Manu was not injured, we might not have got Amrabat. But either way, 
Anthony Martial up front. We had Rashford on the, on the right. And sometimes I like Rashford on the right. I mean, I don't, I'm not the greatest fan of Marcus Rashford. When he's playing well, it's more, it's very instinctive. He's a very instinctive footballer. He's not somebody that I think is very, is blessed with the best footballing IQ. I think, I think that's Marcus Rashford's biggest issue. And when he plays on the right hand side, it's almost as if he's forced to do the right thing. He's forced to simplify his game. He's forced to just pass the ball. Because right? when he plays on the left, he wants to cut in all the, all the time and dribble past four or five players. And sometimes you just need to just keep the ball and keep it simple. So when he plays on the right, sometimes I feel that he can keep it. He's forced to keep it simple, basically, when he plays on the right. So, you know, um, either way, I think this team is good enough to beat Everton in terms of the individual players. McTominay, I know a lot of people have their issues with, with, with McTominay starting. I mean, he, he scored a few goals, res, rescued, saved the manager's ass, And now he's starting every game. McTominay shouldn't be starting games for Man United Football Club. He shouldn't be. But he gives it his all when he starts. So it is what it is. Um, Lindelof, I'm, su I'm surprised to see Lindelof and Harry Maguire are first choice centre-back pairing. It's almost as if they survived the purge. They survived everything and they're the ones still here. And Varane and Martinez, well, Varane looks like he's, he's going off. So Varane looks like he might be sold. Who knows? But that's the starting lineup. Whatever you think of the starting lineup, it's good enough to beat Everton and we did beat Everton. So let's talk about the game as we do in this channel. We say what we see, not how we feel. We try not to be as biased. Even though we're, we're all biased, I'm biased, but I try, I try not to be. So lucky, luckily, first few minutes, Garnacho scored. Now for us, for United, that has set us at ease. And that's one thing that's very important for United, especially um, the backdrop of everything that's going on with the club, the takeover, the performances, Ten Hag and Sancho and Varane's and Casemiro's. Scoring a goal within the first few minutes, perfect. And what a goal to score, take a bow. Listen, you can say what you want about Garnacho. You can say that he's not ready or he is ready. I think that he's, he's someone who's he's got a lot of pace and we love pace and power in this, in this country. And we don't like footballers with IQ and we don't always respect technicality. We love someone who can run past somebody. And I think Garnacho is one of those guys who's got a lot of pace, he's got a lot of power, but I want to see more in terms of up here. I want to see more, I want to see better decision-making, when to pass the ball, when not to pass, and when to dribble, when not to dribble. When, you know, and that comes usually with time, with experience. The more you play, the more you know what to do in certain situations, the more you realise that, okay, when I'm faced in this situation, I know what to do and I know I should do this. So that usually comes with time, but still I, I do want to see more. But that being said, say what you want about the kid, that goal, I don't think we will see a better goal this season at, well, from any, well, I don't know from any player, but definitely from a United player. Was it better than Rooney's Overhead kick, I think, in terms of the technique and technicalities, I think it was because Rooney's one came off his shin. It wasn't clean. Rooney didn't, I don't think Rooney had to adjust his body as much as Garnacho did. Garnacho had to take two or three steps backwards, adjust his body a little bit more. It was further out. Probably less pace on Garnacho's one, but Garnacho's one was was directly it was perfectly in the corner so I would say if I'm going to compare them and you know I don't always like to compare because I think it's lazy to just compare all the time sometimes you just talk about something objectively but you know if you had to I would say Garnacho's one probably just takes it um, but that goal really as it was a beautiful goal good cross and once again it was Rashford keeping it simple on the right hand side just doing a simple overlapping pass, overlapping run from Dallo, who just put the cross in. Dallo, when he's ready, when he's feeling himself, when he's in the mood, he can he can really use his right foot really well. And he put in a really peach, a peach of a cross for Garnacho. Really good goal. I mean, when I was watching it, I didn't even know what to do. I was like, wow, wow, this, yeah. What a goal, what a goal. So yeah, but yeah, like, like I said, that goal relaxed United. We started playing as we do. 
out from the back. We started, you know, Maguire getting the ball, passing to Linden off. We passed it between each other, mostly in, mostly at the back, not really during the midfield. The midfield don't really, the way we play, we don't really keep the ball in midfield or in attack. It's, the way we play, you know, because you know, the Ten Hag wants us to be this transition team, the best transition team. And the way he sets us up, I don't think it's conducive to really retain possession and to build and maintain the ball, maintain the ball and retain the ball in the final third and to pin teams back the way that Arsenal and Man City can. I don't think we are set up to do that. But like I said, even Scott McTominay within the first 15 minutes, he was looking for the ball. Mainu was playing football above his years, in my opinion. He was calm and composed. He was dropping deep into, into number six, looking for the ball, turning and trying to play the ball forward, playing the ball back, looking to where the spaces were, dropping deep. He was playing football well above his years, in my opinion. But even even though we were getting into the game and we were, you know, calming down and, and we were getting a foothold of the game, at the same time, we were starting to get a bit sloppy and Everton started getting into the game and Everton midfield started stringing one or two passes together. And slowly, we saw that Everton, in, especially in the midfield, were, were having a bit of room, were having a bit of joy and then they had a free header. Free header went straight at Onana, thankfully. I think it was Calvert-Lewin. But after that free header, they started having more chances. And I think the 31st minute, I believe, they had a really good chance from Calvert-Lewin and a really good save from Onana. And then Mainu also cleared it off the line after that. Then Decore missed um, after the pullback. So chance after chance, um, Garner Gay had a chance as well afterwards. So Everton started building momentum. And if Everton had just clinical finishes, had better quality in the final third. Today's game, like I said before, would have gone differently. You know, apart from the first few minutes, United created really no chances. We, Like I said before, we're not designed, we're not built as a team to build from the back and to pin a team back and to retain possession like that. We're built to almost counter-attack. We're built to transition. And, and once we don't, once we transition and they win the ball, or once we transition and we don't score, we don't know how to build again. We don't know how to do that. In the final third, there is still that lack of cohesion. And Everton had better chances. Everton, Everton actually had better chances than United in today's game. And that's the point I'm making. I think the underlying thing today is that even though United won the game, Everton had the better chances. Second half, nothing really happened in terms of Everton, even though Everton didn't, it didn't, I don't feel like Everton were going to score. But at the same time, the game really fizzled out. And even though we scored more goals in the second half, I feel like the first half had more, you know, more action. The penalty won by Martial was a very good penalty. He, I think he still kind of stuck his leg out. He waited for it, but it was still a foul. It was still a foul. And Martial was very good at keeping... Close control, close, close control of the ball, keeping possession. He's really, really good at that. So, a really good penalty that was won by uh, Martial. R Rashford, stat padding, he didn't really have a good game. I mean, he, yeah, he didn't really have the best of games, but hopefully that goal can boost his confidence for further games. Uh, Mainu came off after that for Amabat. Garnacho came off for Palestri, I believe. And then we scored our third goal, Martial, he started the, the um, move with up the ball to, um, I think it might be um, Palestri or Garnacho. I think it's, uh, no, Palestri down the right. One, two, I think with Bruno. Lovely, lovely dink goal. This, this is what Martial's really good at. Keeping the ball, like I said, close to his feet, close control. And once he had space and time, he's very good, very clinical, very composed in those one-on-one -on -one situations. So I didn't really have any concerns that he was going to miss once he was through. And like I said, really good dink finish, classical Martial finish. Anyone else would have scored that dink, we would be waxing lyrical about them. But there is always going to be now, and I've seen it, and we've all seen it, a, I would say a hate, a bias against Martial for whatever reason. Um, in the football community, in the United fan base as well. But 
that's the game as I saw it. My man of the match today was, I'm going to give it, despite the fact that I think Gary Neville gave it to Garnacho, I'm going to give it to Mainu because it's about who was the man of the match and he had the best performance today, I believe. Worthy shout out, of course, to Garnacho. That goal was amazing. But Mainu today, for me, was the guy. I think he's 18 and I think he was the best player on the pitch. Bruno, once again, the captain, he's in a, you know, claim and an assist for Martial's goal. He was, wasn't really anywhere to be seen, to be fair. Another game where I didn't really notice him. Rashford. I mean, I, I, I'm expecting more from United. I'm still expecting more. But I don't know because I'm thinking if this is Galatasaray on the weekend and we're giving away the same chances as we gave away against Everton, they're scoring those chances. They're scoring those chances. So the problem is a lot of fans, we don't look at performances. We just look at the fact that we've won the game. And based on the performance and the chances we've gave away and the fact that they had more shots off and on target, had more shots than us, had more shots on target. And if they just had better finishing or finishers, they could have won this game. And this is a team that arguably, potentially could go down. So I'm not going to be over the moon and over ecstatic about what's to come based on what I've seen today. Because what I've seen today is just three individuals, really, once again, saving Man United and this manager. Can he turn it around? Can we play better? I think so. But yeah, this season's going to be long. There you go, guys. That's my analysis. What do you guys think? Who was your man of the match? Who was your standout player? What do you guys think of the manager's substitutions? Substitutions, should I say. Um, the way he set us up, the way he's approaching these games, the fact that he's now going with the players that he's going with. He seems as if he's going with plan E right now rather than plan A. Let me know your thoughts, guys, on the game and, and on the upcoming game as well. Yeah, let me know. Let me know your, let me know your thoughts, guys. Um, thank you guys for watching. Have a good have a good week as usual. I'll see you guys after the next game. Yeah, I mean I'm happy. Great goal by Garnacho, like I said, I'm happy. But I just want more from the performance. I want now to build on a style of play. Ten Hag, let's start flashing out an identity. Yeah, that's what I want now. Anyway, Everton. I don't know about Everton. I think they might go down. Um, but based on the chances they created today against United, if they can start finishing their dinner, then maybe not. Maybe not. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Have a good time. Share the video as usual. Like, subscribe, do all of those things. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace. If you're not...